Welcome back to Inside the U.S. Open, presented by Mercedes-Benz. As the U.S. Open quickly approaches, it's hard to reference this celebrated tournament without its host country, the USA. As we think back, American legends have a very strong presence at the Open. Jimmy Connors, Andre Agassi, Pete Sampras, and many more. But today, the question remains, what is the future of American men's tennis? Where is it headed? And how can it get even better? Recently, I had the chance to sit down with the sport's most talented up-and-comers and distinguished players. Let's hear what they had to say about tennis in the U.S. and what's on the horizon. John, a lot's being made about American tennis, where it was, where it is now, and where it's going. How do you view it? As American tennis fans, um, we were kind of spoiled growing up in the 70s and 80s and 90s. I could run off all the great American players, all the Grand Slams these guys won. And it has been, you know, a full 10 years since uh, an American has, has won a Grand Slam. But I think the game has sort of, sort of evolved. It was certainly very tough, um, you know, in the 80s and the 90s. But I think now the game is just so international and so deep. Um, and these guys in Europe and in South America seems like they're just coming out of nowhere and everybody can play. Well, Leighton, you could definitely relate because Australia and Americans were at the forefront of tennis for so long and so dominant. Is it a matter of maybe the public recalibrating their expectations and appreciating the fact that the sport has become so much more international and global? Yeah, a little bit. Connors, McEnroe, Sampras, Agassi, uh, Courier, Chang, there were so many great players and they were always at the business end of the Grand Slams, whereas right at the moment, obviously led by Federer, Djokovic, Nadal, Murray, you know, a lot's happening over on the eastern uh, border over there. So I, I think in terms of Australia and America, you know, tennis isn't always sort of 12 months of the year, and, and that's the tough thing to try and get the best juniors wanting to play our sport. In the States, you have a lot of other sports that are maybe a little bit more popular right now than tennis, so they get some of our athletes as well. But with that being said, there's no excuses. It's on us to go out there and work harder and, and just uh, make sure we don't leave any stones unturned. We just got to make it happen. James, from your perspective, where is American tennis at right now? I still think American tennis is in a good place. Uh, we've got the Bryans as the, the best doubles team in America. We got in, in the world, excuse me, and we got Isner, Query, top 20 players. I myself have a good four, five, six years ahead of me. So I think American tennis fans maybe need to uh, lighten up a little bit and just sort of let it come to them and not, not, so much, uh, not put so much pressure on us. Maybe just appreciate what you guys are doing mm -hmm. now and not compare it to the past. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I feel like I've been, I've been very consistent. It's something I'm very proud of. I'm certainly not satisfied. I do feel like I can, I can go higher than that and, and stay higher than that. I see it really changing in America right now. Uh, I see a lot of camaraderie with the, with the American players. They're seeing it, they're digging down. Uh, they're working hard. We have some young players that are developing later on. I think we're gonna surprise the world a little bit. Which players in particular do you believe have the most potential? Uh, we got the young guys coming up. Jack Sock, Christian Harrison, Ryan Harrison, Dennis Kudla, Steve Johnson. Even Ryan Williams breaking into the top 100 or getting close. So I think the, the future is definitely looking, looking bright. Ryan, who's next is a question that's often asked in reference to American tennis. There's yourself, Jack Sock, Ryan Harrison, Dennis Kudla, Stevie Johnson. Those are the names that keep coming up. What does it mean to you to be a part of that group? It's huge. You know, when you're practicing out there with all the other guys, you look over and that guy's not quitting. It makes you want to keep going as well. So uh, it really, you know, we push each other and, uh, you know, we're, we're looking to make that next jump. Jack, you're only 20 years of age. The Davis Cup captain, Jim Currier, has already referred to you as having maybe the second biggest weapon off the forehand side in the sport next to the Nadal. What emotions does that evoke when you hear someone that you respect so much talk that positively about you? Yeah, I mean, that's... Uh... Yeah, it's kind of music to my ears. When you Google your name, there are thousands of hits that mention you in relation to the future of American tennis. How much pressure is that? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's brought up, I think, a good amount, um, not only for me, but a lot of the younger uh, American guys as well, and working to do, is do the best we can towards bringing a bunch of Americans back towards the top. And so uh, I think we're all working to do that, and, and, and I think we can. James, you know what it feels like to be the number one American. You had a stint there in the middle of Roddick's very long run. Is it a lot of pressure? Yeah, it's a ton of pressure. And uh, I think it's something that you don't realize until you get there. Because when, once you get there, you start hearing all the interviews and talk about the number one American. And they, they tell you how rare it was. I mean, I, I really enjoyed it. I loved it. I also knew 
that um, at that point in my career, Andy and I were, were both kind of the, the top two Americans that were kind of vying for that. Christian, it's an interesting dynamic having two of the best prospects in American tennis be brothers. What's it like for you? Um, well, definitely he's a little bit older, so I've kind of got to learn a little bit from him coming up whenever he was kind of trying to make his stage and kind of his place on the tour, and that's kind of where I'm at now. Now we asked your brother this as well, since he's one of the top prospects in American men's tennis. What would it mean to him, not just to win the doubles at the US Open with his brother, but possibly play Arthur Ashe Stadium on the court against his older brother, Ryan Harrison versus Christian Harrison, Arthur Ashe Stadium, US Open. That'd be one of the coolest experiences you could imagine. I know that watching us play um, at the Open last year and our fun run to the quarters was probably one of the best moments my parents have had. So I'm looking forward to the opportunity one day. We both have a long ways to go, but that'd be one of the coolest moments I could ever imagine. So American Tennis needs the Harrison brothers to be successful. <laughs> they need somebody. Hopefully, hopefully it's us and, and, and some of the other guys. And uh, I certainly hope that we can all get there. Up next, we'll continue our discussions with some of America's most respected players and soon-to-be stars, and hear how quickly the sport is evolving and reaching new heights. It's actually kind of scary. You see, you see these guys, and it's just, um, just how they move is absolutely incredible. You, know, you look at the top guys in the game. And later, we'll explore the future of the U.S. Open and predict who could be the next American champion on the men's side. All that and more on Inside the U.S. Open, presented by Mercedes-Benz.